Hello there and welcome back to the studio. Today it feels like it's been such a long time since I've uploaded a video, doesn't it? Here's an image of what I'm going to be painting, okay? So these are images of the painting. You are actually seeing this in the future relative to me. I have not painted it yet. So in today's episode you are going to see pretty much every single brushstroke involved in whatever painting you have just seen. Now the way that this is going to be filmed is going to be live talking so I'm going to be talking to you as I'm painting so that's going to change up the pace a little bit I paint a little bit slower when I have to you know talk to a uh, microphone you know a microphone that's clipped onto me and you know carry a coherent stream of thoughts on the canvas but anyways on the palette here we've got titanium white flake white burnt umber a lizard crimson permanent cadmium red yellow ochre sap green ultramarine blue ivory black and neo mcgill medium and if you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using I have all of them typed up in the description box down below so you can see some of the brushes and the oil paints the thinner the medium uh, all typed in the description box down below along with their associated Amazon affiliate links if you decide to click on any of those links it will redirect you to the Amazon page where you can feel free to browse and or purchase the same type of materials I'm using just know that if you do purchase them Amazon will contribute a small amount to me so thank you in advance if you do that and if I I seem like I'm talking very quickly it's because I really want to get to painting and I've got quite a few things to say before I start painting but this will be the last thing I'll say but this is a really really good thing so now my website thanks to Lucy thank you so much Lucy everybody clap clap the palette clap the palette Lucy has been helping me out so much she's been helping us out so much now on our website we have an online store so you're able to purchase you know uh, mugs with my logo my new logo um, stickers t-shirts hats and you can even purchase aprons that's right you can purchase all of that merchandise through my website all thanks to Lucy and not only that you can also commission me to paint your very own original custom uh, Upari artist painting you can also do commissions there it has a um, a little tab there for commissions and any of the paintings that you've seen on these videos pretty much all of them are for sale you can purchase any of them that you would like through my website all thanks to Lucy so thank you so much Lucy for that and all right let's go ahead and get a little bit of burnt umber I'm just using a size 2 bristle brush and a little bit of odorless mineral spirits you might know what I'm about to do so I am creating a drawing brush just a little bit of mineral spirits and some burnt umber and this is what I'm going to use to draw with and before I forget here is an image of our model, Madeline. Yes, I'm going to be painting Madeline again. So hopefully you can see the palette here. So the burnt umber. All right, now is the time where everything is going to slow down. So as you know, this is going to be an ala prima portrait. Ala prima means wet on wet. So what I'm looking for right now is to establish my basic proportions. And I'm working on an 11 by 14 inch cotton canvas that has been pre-toned with oil paint several weeks prior to filming. So suppose I'm supposing that the top of the head is going to fit a little bit there. So I'm just thinking of basic placement right now. I don't want the hair to go too far back. So I think placing this around here will work. Now ideally you don't want your drawing brush to have too much medium. And like I said today's episode will be quite a long one. You will have pretty much all the footage involved in this portrait. So let's suppose the head is going to be there, the neck is going to go about here, and a little bit of an awkward composition. I think it's just awkward because it needs the hair over here. Yeah, just a little bit of a basic shape. A shape. I'm just thinking of the, uh, the negative shape all throughout here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So now I'm going to look for the corner of the side of the eye socket. Just 
simple straight lines and angles. So I'm drawing with the brush with the same kind of care and precision uh, if I were to be drawing with graphite. Looking at the angle of the eyebrows. So really quickly here, we're going to look at the main triangle. So if the eyebrows are there, then the forehead's getting a little short, but that's okay. You can always move the forehead up. Not a problem. So the corner of the concavity of the eye socket on this side. And you want to think about shape. You want to learn how to relate shapes to one another. There's the hair. So the eye. Simple shape for that. Now, if you saw last, so if you saw the last video, uh, the one I uploaded on Saturday, that one was with acrylic. And um, one of the advantages to oil paint over acrylic, so if you are an acrylic painter and you watched my last one, and maybe you're watching this, this one, um, one of the advantages to oil paint is that it dries pretty much the same color. So I had been practicing with acrylic for a while before uploading that video. Um, but you know, one of the things that I really enjoy about this is that I really don't have to think about the value changing when it dries in like a couple minutes. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoy acrylic. In fact, I was just working with acrylic not too long ago today. You know? All right, so let's look at the nose. So again, the main triangle, okay? Point, point, point. Three of them, connect them. Triangle. So again, I'm thinking of basic proportion. I think the nose should fit about there, right? Now, if I'm gonna put the eye there, so suppose the eye is gonna fit here, the hair is going to have to go backwards, or backwards, really. The hair is gonna have to be cropped somewhere over here. So I'm going to get a dry bristle brush just to help push the paint around. Kind of cautious not to put any mineral spirits on it yet. Alright, so now I'm thinking of verticals. So where does this drop in relation to this? I think we're pretty good. I might be messing up the nose. Which is okay for now. All right, so let's see. Again, I'm just working with the same shapes all at once. get the bristle brush, clean and dry bristle brush, just kind of blur that. So I can put in this darker accent for the dark of the eye. You want just enough information for this to read and then you can change it all you want when it's time for color. All right, so the mouth, give or take, will fit around here. That eye is really starting to bother me. So when in doubt, blur it out is a thing that I usually say. So I'm just gonna blur that. It looks better that way, I think. What really matters, what really matters is the tear duct. You know, this point in relation to this the corner here. And I will say the most difficult thing about painting is drawing. Trust me, I'm talking to you as someone with hundreds of portrait paintings worth of experience. And I still struggle with drawing. So if you struggle with drawing, you're not alone. 
Drawing is the root of all good and evil. With oil painting. Now with a smaller brush, you do tend to have more control. So that's why I started off with this one, with the two. You know, even though I'm covering such a large area like that. So our model is three quarter and three quarter view, but closer to profile. And I say three quarter just because I see this corner of her eye. But since she's close, closer to profile, I need to think about the distance from here to here, okay? This needs to be somewhat the same as this. So pretty far off when it comes to the back side of the skull. But now she's not completely in profile, so it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is moving the chin up. So the true point or the true measurement, I don't know, might be about there, I believe. There we go. Now we're, we're pretty close, give or take a little bit, I don't know, a little shape right there. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to a bigger brush because I'm getting tired of having to push the paint around. And just using Burnt Umber for now. Thinned out with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits, okay? No medium just yet, just the odorless mineral spirits. And this will evaporate into the air in a little bit. And the idea is to get the abstract pattern, however long it takes however long it takes. You know, when you start a painting, it's really, a, you're making a commitment to that canvas. So getting the basic shapes early on like this is going to help us out tremendously in the long run. Okay, so now the chin goes up like that, the neck more like this, okay, back to the smaller brush. So you really want to pick and choose how much information you put in per area. And I think to think about it in terms of zones, so like a zone here for the forehead, cheekbones, another zone, maxilla here, nose, another zone, mouth, mandible. So for instance, the mandible, so the, ch the chin, mandible area, just maybe one, two, three, four lines, nothing so drastic. And that should be pretty close to what I want. The mouth even less, to be honest. Try to put as minimal information as I can with the mouth. It's the easiest thing to move when it goes wrong. And believe me, it usually does. Pushing that over, again with the dry brush, just to get a little bit of control. Okay, using verticals. All right, so now I'm gonna put a little bit of mineral spirits into a brush, and this is going to be my eraser brush. The tiniest bit of mineral spirits, and I'm using this to carve out the outside shape. And in doing so, after this, I'm gonna to have to wait maybe a minute or so for the mineral spirits to start to evaporate. And that's okay because we're going to have to mix up the flesh tones anyway. And again, very minimal information. Let's 
I'm gonna get the uh, uh, the dry brushes. Adjusting the shapes a little bit. I'm also kind of covering the light with the mineral spirits. Just to have kind of a more unified tone. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go over it anyway. Alright, so now a little more nuance for the eyebrow. And like I said, this area is the most important. Everything else I can kind of adjust however I want. It's much easier to work that way. So we're almost done with the block in stage. Actually moved a little faster, I think, than I thought I would. Stand back. So if you happen to be painting while you're watching or listening to this, how about this? Every time I stand back, every time I say that I'm standing back, try to stand back yourself from whatever you're working on. I usually recommend to do that as much as possible to gain objectivity and, you know, stay about an arm's length away. and try not to get too attached to the painting, especially early on. Maybe I want to work on the shapes out here. Nah, I think that's good. How about we mix up some flesh tones now? And just before we mix up the, the flesh tones, hopefully you can see I have the camera really close. You can see how the mineral spirits pushes. See that, how it just pushes the paint very, very nicely. This is one of the things I don't really get out of water mixable oils or acrylic, okay? So this is one of the very useful things that you have. Um, when you're drawing with oil paint, see how it's kind of like bleeding all through the sides? Which is a good thing, once this evaporates, it's just gonna leave a solid mark there. Now on the palette, we're just gonna mix up a few value and color uh, scales that I tend to call color value web. So that's why it's pretty useful, I think, to have a large palette. See how, how large this palette is in comparison to that canvas. But another thing I should note, since I am talking live, so I get to kind of slow down, meaning I'm talking and painting at the same time, is just take note at the amount of time I spent on just the basic shape, okay? This is considered fast. This is considered super for super fast, okay, extremely fast. Now, if you are a beginner, if you have, that is, if you're a beginner, I, I consider less than 100 portrait paintings, I, I would say is kind of beginner um, in terms of your experience level. So if you have less than 100 paintings, portrait paintings, that is, under your belt, spend much more time than what I spent on the, the basic block in, because getting those shapes as accurate and uh, as simplistically accurate as possible is no easy task. It does take quite a bit of training to be able to train yourself to uh, see with that kind of precision, okay? It doesn't mean that I'm any better than anyone else, it just means that I've done this about a million times. That's what really helps me out. And even though I've done this about a million times, I've messed this up about a million times. I probably messed something up there. And again, that's just the nature of how this works. So anyway, let's go ahead and mix up these colors. Now I'm going to mix up what I refer to as the color value web. So starting off with just burnt umber, right on top of the little puddle that I used for drawing, for the drawing color. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue. At this stage, I don't care what it is, as long as it's kind of warm and dark. So now a little bit of the alizarin crimson permanent. Yellow ochre, cadmium red more cadmium red, yellow ochre, sap green. So the way I think about the color value web is uh, the direction that the flesh tones go. 
I usually have to blur my eyes at the model to get an idea of where I'm heading with these flesh tones. So um, I'm heading in the more pinkish direction. Uh, other folks such as me, um, my flesh tones would be a little more in the orangey direction. And right now I'm just using flake white in the middle tones and I'm using flake white in the middle tones because it has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, allowing you to have a thicker consistency of paint. Now watch how the value will raise with just the tiniest bit of the titanium white. Maybe you can't see that too well. I'm gonna get closer to the camera here. So yellow ochre, titanium white, cadmium red. This is one of the things that I, another one, one of the things I really love about traditional oil paints as opposed to water mixable and I guess acrylic now since I have a little bit of experience with acrylic, not very much, but just the consistency of the paint, especially when you're using artist grade oil paints. These are all either Winsor Newton, Grumbacher, uh, Williamsburg, you know, they're all artist grade. Just the feeling of the paint, you know, it's, it's heavy, heavy. It's like melted butter, but when you use less medium, notice how much, how little medium I'm actually using. Um, it actually is like melted butter, but a little bit thicker, like kind of partially frozen melted butter, if that makes any sense. Just butter that's lightly melted, how about that? All right, so more of the cadmium red, titanium white, and pay attention to my mixtures very carefully because most of the shots um, aren't going to have the palette in it just because you know I don't have a camera crew. I have to stop every time I'm filming to show you the palette. All right, so that is that for the flesh tones. Now I'm going to mix up what I refer to as a rail. But first, let me clean off the brush. Hopefully, you can. All right, so that is the odorless mineral spirits. Now don't confuse what I'm doing here. I'm not completely cleaning. It's not completely cleaning off the brush, okay? I'm just partially cleaning it off, okay? It's not completely clean, just partially clean. Enough for me to get the next mixture. This is gonna be for a rail. I refer to these as rails. You can call them whatever you want. It is a gradation of tone that is cooler that I'm mixing right next to the flesh tones. And I'm gonna actually let it blend into the flesh tones. So that I get, so like the sclera would actually live somewhere around here. You know, this would be kind of like the darker, cooler accents. Okay, I'm gonna clean it off, partially clean it off again. The odorless mineral spirits. And now we're gonna create a warm rail. So we're gonna use the alizarin crimson permanent. Cadmium red, mixing right onto the side. Let's see, hopefully you can see. I'm gonna get closer to the camera for you. Now it's getting pinker and pinker, lighter, lighter, as it blends in with the flesh tones. And this is gonna be for the cooler, sorry, the cooler, the warmer flesh tones. The lips, the tones for the lips are probably gonna live somewhere around here. And the color, you know, the colors that I'm gonna mix up for the flesh tones are gonna to pretty much live all around here. This can actually probably get most uh, skin complexions, most flesh tones will live somewhere around here. So this is how I like to have my palette organized for this kind of stuff. All right, so now we're gonna move into the next stage. So this was the block end stage. Now we're gonna move into the large plain stage. So I'm gonna use a clean brush, um, similar to the one I was using uh, to mix up the Color Valley Web, except this one hasn't seen any paint yet today. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna pick a plane, any plane really. Um, let's suppose this one right here. And I'm not necessarily trying to color match or anything like that. I'm just trying to uh, get an idea of the tonality of this area. So in terms of large planes, I'm gonna break it down for you. So here's one big plane here, okay, for the uh, 
the cheekbone. Here is another. Notice how the color didn't really change much. Uh, it's the value that changed. It dropped down in value a little bit. So there are two values there. Uh, hopefully you can see this well. The camera is at an angle. Uh, just take note of that. It will distort the image a little bit, but it's really the only way I can film uh, having the uh, canvas right in front of me and still being able to back up. So yeah, now with the same brush, I'm adding a little bit of titanium white. I don't know if you can see it over here, just a little bit of the titanium white and yellow ochre. Probably didn't need yellow ochre, but just titanium white trying to use a little to no medium with the finest quality bristle brushes that I could get. All right, so a little bit lighter here. So there are three planes now, one, two, and three. This plane is the side of the tear duct. It's catching the light a little bit more in this area, so I might um, maybe I shouldn't, I'm going to push the value a little higher. I do know I can go a little bit higher than that, and I want to relate uh, areas to one another. Okay, so um, right now I'm going to switch to the other brush. Um, the one I was using to mix up the uh, Color Valley Web. It has been about couple minutes now so the odorless mineral spirits has pretty much evaporated from it so now we're going to mix up the side plane of the nose now we're going to get a little cooler and pinker in color right around here and when you're working in Ala Prima one thing to note is that thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. That is how you can get the effect of, you know, like layering with wet on wet painting. All right, now we're getting more of the tonal range for these light areas. Now a little more titanium white into the lighter region of the palette. Some of the flake white. I'm just mixing off camera here. Okay, now we're going to push this light plane. See how I'm kind of working through the lights? First I started off with these darks here, this dark here, now with the light. Now with the forehead. Forehead's usually a little more in the yellowish side, I find. At least in this lighting. This was taken with a electric light. This photo reference was taken, um, you know, back when I was filming the daily episodes. Um, this was taken with my uh, portrait painting group on one of those episodes. Alright, so just covering a little bit lighter there. Now let's suppose we're going to work our way around the maxilla. This is the maxilla region. So it's going to get a little bit um, pinker. Alright, so a little pinker here. And trying to use little to no medium. The medium will come in later. And uh, hopefully I'll explain why. When I get there, I say hopefully because I don't know. When I get much more focused in the painting, I tend to talk less, which uh, you might actually prefer. But uh, you know, when I switch into you know, super concentration mode, I probably will be talking much less. And I'm using two brushes. Okay, I have a light brush and a dark brush.
a little more of a transition here. I'm going to switch, uh, never mind. Um, I was going to switch to a different brush. This one did have a little bit of the odorless mineral spirits, so but I'm kind of running low on brushes. These are Robert Simmons. Very expensive, actually, but they're really, really worth the money. I do really enjoy Robert Simmons brushes. And again, I have links in the description box for that in case you want to purchase some on Amazon. They really just they pick up the paint so nicely. It's like night and day. So now we're starting to work all these planes around here. I'm going to stand back. Periodically, I have to stand back to get an idea of what the painting looks like at a distance and make sure that my camera didn't stop recording. Since I am planning, planning excuse me, to, to film all of this, I have to be very cautious with my camera. It does turn off after, I think, 29 minutes. So that was a darker, kind of warmer plane for the cheekbone, the zygomatic area. Then it's going to get lighter. Hopefully you can see lighter and a little bit cooler around the bottom. Maybe not that light. There we go. Somewhere about there. I'm thinking of the mask of the face. Okay, so it's going to get much lighter over here. And it's going to start to get darker underneath of the mouth and cooler. Right around here. Hear my chihuahua barking in the background, Mr. Taco. Pretty soon somebody's gonna turn on the TV, which is going to annoy me, but it's okay. You won't be able to hear it, I don't think, because my microphone is clipped onto me, and it's actually pretty good at blocking out noise. It's a shame that my ears aren't. I would have put on my headphones, but I kind of need to hear my voice as I'm speaking a little bit. Now again, see how I, I don't really care about the mouth, you know, moving it around is not a problem. It's just this larger structure that I'm much more focused on. So darker near the chin. So the background color, that kind of the door that you see over there, um, and then a little bit of the light up here, I don't think I want to put that in. I feel like that would just be distracting, so I might go with like a gray or something. Something darker and cooler, just to get the flesh tones to show. Now we're gonna have a darker, warmer, so I'm using my color value rail, the warmer area of it to get this little tone here for the nose. You know, sometimes in life, the only thing that makes sense is painting. You ever feel that way? Ah. Pushing a little more light. I'm going to use a lot of flake white. I don't know if you can see this. This is a stretch. But more flake white, like a ton of it. The yellow ochre. I figure if I put it right in front of the painting, then maybe you can see it. Okay. 
What was I doing? Oh, okay, for the bottom of the nose. You ever do that? Mix up a color and then you forget what you mixed it for. I do that a lot. All right, so I'm thinking the background, um, I'm gonna use a different brush. I think the background I'm gonna paint in a different color. So let, let me show you what I'm gonna mix. So with a different brush, still not gonna use too much medium. I'm gonna mix on this side of the palette, ultramarine blue, ivory black, titanium white, more titanium white, a little more ivory black. Uh, I think this ought to be about good. I just realized um, I didn't turn off the autofocus when I was mixing the colors previously. So hopefully you can see, at least now, the autofocus is on here. So hopefully you can see this is a kind of neutral uh, blue. Maybe that's a little too saturated, maybe too generic of a blue. So a little bit of burnt umber. I don't want a blue that's too obvious blue, if you know what I mean. Let's see what that one looks like. It's a little better. And I'm just going to kind of scratch the canvas with it. And by scratch, I mean just like lightly go like this. So I'm only going to put in the background color, this made up background color, um, where I feel like it will contrast with the face, but pretty much I don't think I'm going to cover the entire thing, it's just not the look that I'm after. I'm just using this right now to uh, help draw the outline, that's why I have you a little closer actually. So the outside shape goes in. I may have to get the brush with the flesh tone and charge it up with a little more color just so I can get that edge. There. Then it goes inwards like this. We'll put in the mouth later. There. And the less medium you use, the better, actually. Just try to stay away from it as long as you can. There's a little bit of a shape up here, like this. I think I have it. I think I'll just leave that as it is. Right, a little, I gotta study this shape a little more closely. That angle looks about right. With profile or uh, three quarter closer to profile, like this one is, uh, the outside shape is really important. Think about this this outside shape, this outline, just as if it were a linear drawing. I'm gonna get the darker flesh tone brush and cover the dark for the neck or at least down here it's actually a little more light I'm applying the brush strokes in this kind of direction just because my light source is in this direction just so it doesn't glare too much so a little bit lighter, not much, but a little lighter over there. 
Now I've got to mix something up for the hair. All right, so I guess I'll mix maybe somewhere over here. So this is going to be ivory black, alizarin, crimson, permanent, no medium, alizarin, crimson, permanent, ivory black, a little bit of burnt umber. It's really kind of just a filler color, meaning it doesn't really affect what the mixture I just created too much. Just using the burnt umber to just add more thickness to the paint. We want this to be as heavy as possible. More alizarin, crimson, permanent. Maybe a little sap green just so it's not too hot. But I want it to be darker and a little bit warmer. And that ought to be about good. So I'm going to start off up here by the hairline. And um, I'm really going to try to get this edge. So um, the hairline in particular, you want the edge to be very descriptive. So we're talking about edge quality a little bit here. So I'm putting a little bit of the darker half tone. Hopefully you can see this. So a little bit of the darker half tone here just so the hair looks like it's you know, sitting on top of the model's head. I'm gonna get a dry brush if I have one left to soften that a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna push this darker up here. So with the, the hair, you really want to think about uh, simplicity of shape. Right now, detail is nothing, okay? And that's usually the case, really. Detail is really not that, you know, not that necessary to get the forms to read. You really want to focus on what it looks like at a distance. And by now, the burnt umber, see this? I'm able to rub my hands on it. The burnt umber drawing already kind of faded. The odorless mineral spirits kind of just evaporated. That's what you want. And now we're just working right over top. This is very thick and heavy paint. This is gold and this is what we want. This is what we need. So I'm leaving a little bit of the umber sketch to show through over there. And if you are, um, you know, considering watching this and then working on a painting like this, just know that this is much more how you would start an Alla Prima, okay? You can layer this. You know, I'm actually setting this up quite nicely to layer. Um, but just know that ivory black, uh, the color I used a lot in the hair, you know, I didn't use it exclusively. Um, you know, but a darker color, such as ivory black, has a completely different drying speed, drying rate, than, you know, burnt umber. Ivory black actually takes forever to dry, and that's one of the advantages that, uh, say, acrylic has over oil painting. That I've noticed is the drying time. You know, it, it dries in a couple minutes, and then it just is. Oil paint, you have to sit there and wait for it. But oil paint, you know, has this open time, the time that the paint is wet, that's much longer and much easier for a beginner. I would say oil paint is much more suited for uh, someone that's just getting into portrait painting. Acrylic, I would say, is much more difficult. But that's just coming from someone that doesn't have as much experience with acrylic, but has been using acrylic. Actually, I'm pretty fond of acrylic. I, I actually really like it. All right, so now that we have that dark shape for the hair, I can put in some little details and nuances in that hair later. Now is when the mineral spirits will start to uh, be useful. So now we're going to add what I would, I guess I can call the second layer, but really all it's gonna be is the, um, the smaller shapes. So we put in the bigger planes, okay? Large plane divisions, now the next step is going to be the smaller plane divisions. So I've switched to a smaller brush and synthetic brush. 
and using a little bit of the mineral spirits, we're now going to have a much thinner application of paint. So now we're really going to start to draw. So um, I'm going to pick a point, pick an area. Okay, say right here. So that is the top of the uh, concavity of the eye socket, kind of where it meets up with the upper eyelid. Just making sure that that boundary is well defined. Now I'm going to get another small brush, a little bit of odorless minerals, odorless, no, um, this right here, hopefully you can see. So I'm using the medium again, I get a little bit of a lighter color. And we're going to put in the light for the tear duct, it's actually a little higher, tear duct goes a little bit higher. And at this point, I'm really thinking about the pre-Raphaelites, um, the, uh, you know, like the Waterhouse painting that I did, the master study that I did probably, I think it's like a week ago now. And um, just because our, our model really resembles, uh, you know, like a pre-Raphaelite look, pre-Raphaelite painting. Not that that has anything to do with the painting. So now we have a darker note. This is a, uh, a little bit of a alizarin permanent. All right, now it's a lighter color. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know if you can see this, but the light for the sclera, I'm going to just take right from here gray with a little bit of flesh tone. Got to be very vigilant of these shapes. This is hard stuff, man. Now a little bit darker. Right over here. Now you can see how that eye is starting to emerge. Now I'm going to get a different brush, a smaller brush. Hopefully you can see this. I really don't know if you can see this, but um, here. Or medium. Right into here. Gonna get the lower eyelid. Told you I would become more quiet when I start to focus more. a little lighter for the um, the other eye thinking so I'm using a horizontal this goes about here see how the paint just sticks very nicely that's why you want medium when you're painting Highly recommend the uh, Neo McGilp, made by Gamblin. Again, links in the description box down below. I actually prefer it a little more over my um, over the stand oil mix that I had before. A 
little bit darker. Get the dark of the eyelash without putting in individual eyelashes. Just want the dark shape for now. This is how you draw with color. A little bit of a lighter shape here. Probably cooler. Drop the temperature a little bit. I have a feeling this is photographic distortion. I don't think I should be seeing that much of her. Uh, the, the other eye socket just doesn't make sense. I'm going to actually cut this in. So you want to be careful of that. Uh, you want to be careful, be wary of the photo references if you do paint from photo references. Again, I really don't prefer photo references. I prefer live models, but that's kind of expensive. So, yeah. As long as you have experience painting from from life, you'll be fine. Just make sure always always interpret. Don't copy. I mean, you can copy if you want. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but. When you work from life, you really learn to kind of think on your feet. You know, you don't really have a lot of time. Whereas with photo references, I mean, we have unlimited time. Anyway, I stop rambling. So I'm using the cooler, darker region of the color value web. So I'm using the cooler rail. Even the eyebrows, thinking of the shape, the exact nature of them. So now the iris, I'm going to use a little bit of the cooler, darker area. And now I'm going to a little bit of the top plane of the lower eyelid. Now the darker flesh tone, because the even the eyelid is going to have a side plane. And this needs to curve up a little more. So 
It's actually a little bit lighter and cooler around the eye back here. I think I'm going to actually have to either lower this shape or raise this one. I'm seeing a little too much of the uh, of the eye iris. I'm going to just raise this. Then we're going to kind of connect the lower eyelid to the tear duct. Sorry, just crashed into my canvas. It's one of the not so good things about a large palette. So I'm going to take this value. Yep, I'm showing you everything, even when I crash into the canvas. There's a little more light catching right over here. A little more medium. Now we're going to get the pupil in there shortly. I'm trying not to crash into the canvas again. Put more of the dark shape over here. There we go. It's actually a little darker and warmer by the uh, concavity of the eye socket. Over here. And now I think what I'm going to do is start to put in some of the tones around the eye. So for instance, right over here, might need more medium. So it's a very light touch. Starting to get the tonality of the shape surrounding the eye. Then we're going to move from the eye to the nose and then the nose to the mouth. And then after that we're going to revisit the large shapes of the face and maybe even repeat the entire process. I don't know. I really don't know how long today's episode is going to be. It's a little lighter here. bit of a darker and cooler value to kind of merge these shapes. I'm doing everything I can around the eye. The eye is going to serve kind of as a role model for the other shapes. Still a little darker over here. Still a little lighter yet, underneath of the lower eyelid. I 
hopefully you can see how the paint is just sticking on very nicely. And again, that is because the first layer was much thicker. This is much thinner since we're using the Neo McGilp. Now we're moving on to the nose. Still very cautious with these planes. So with the nose. All right, so this is a very, very bad, bad sign. So here is the last clip. So here I'm uploading the footage to my editor. I'm just using iMovie. Um, yeah, I'm missing a very large clip. It went dark. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm using iMovie and it can't handle it. And again, I really want to give you more and more footage, more and more footage, but again, uh, technological problems can be a thing, you know, especially with the kind of equipment I have. So uh, yes, there is a substantial loss in footage here that went dark. I really don't know why I see this one plays. This one doesn't. I'm terribly sorry for that. So as I predicted, my SD card was filled, so I may have lost some footage. I just stopped at the mouth, so hopefully you at least saw the beginning of the mouth. I'm not entirely sure. And my battery died at the same time. Good thing I had an extra SD card and an extra battery, but the bad thing about this camera is it doesn't really tell me when it's about to fail. So. Anyway, I have a new card and a new battery, so let's continue on with this painting. So again, I hope you didn't miss too much. I mean, I'm not really going to know until it comes time to editing, but at that point, there's really nothing I can do. Uh, but what I did was I put in the mouth. Hopefully, you at least saw the beginning of the mouth. I don't know if you did, um, but we have established first the length of the filtrum using the... Uh, you know, the color, the flesh tone for the mouth, and then basically started working all these shapes around it. And then the last thing I said was that I was going to start to work the structures surrounding the mouth. So that's what we're doing. The orbicular or It's a little bit darker down here. And over here. This is the little dark pocket the side of the mouth. This is basically the mouth or the face kind of turning into itself for lack of a better analogy. You know, it starts to turn away from the light as it, you know, curves inwards. This is actually one of the most tricky areas of the mouth, if you ask me, is right around here. And it's really just a matter of getting the right gradation of tone. I think that's good. Now what I've done is I've switched to a uh, bristle brush again. So now what we're going to do is revisit the large shapes of the face, just like I promised. 
And again, we are still in the, um, the, the small plane division stage of the Alla Prima painting. But now we're going to extend the smaller plane thinking to the, the rest of the face. So that tends to be kind of my pattern really these days. So here, 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 and then the face. Then I might do it all over again. Here, 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 and then the rest of the face. So with the same brush, I don't know, hopefully you can see this, the titanium white. Let's make it a little cooler, how about that? More flake white, just to have a thicker consistency of paint. Probably should have switched brushes. But oh well, lighter shape there. Now we can really start to punch the highlights, such as this one. Lighter shape there. And over here, it's going to be a lighter plane over here. Now here's where I'm going to have to switch brush, all right, so I can get a softer transition for the eyebrow. Yes, I did say softer transition for the eyebrow. Even the eyebrow has, um, you know, an edge quality that should be studied. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to the uh, bristle brush, get a little bit of a cool, or sorry, a warmer mixture. Maybe that's too warm. I'm going to cool it down. There we go. I'm going to revisit that edge. And um, as you notice, I've been doing a lot of master studies. And the reason I'm kind of revisiting the eyebrows like that um, is because I've actually seen in a lot of um, master studies that I've been doing, the eyebrows in particular, the edges around the eyebrows are usually softer and really well defined in comparison to the paintings that I've been making. So that's one thing you can really learn from master studies you know, as how they treat certain areas. There we go. Now this is actually even going to be a little bit of light over here. Now I did switch to the bristle, which means I'm not really going to be using much medium. I want this consistency to be a little thicker. A little bit more pink around here. Dang, I really did want to show you every single brush stroke. Only to be cut off by technology. I hope I didn't lose too much. See, this is why I need a camera crew. Can't really paint and look at the camera at the same time. We're putting more subtlety into these tones. It's going to be much pinker, so hopefully you can see this. Yeah, the red has been kind of venturing down here. I think just because it has too much linseed oil, but whatever. So the flake white, cadmium red. I'm going to push. We're going to push the uh, chroma over here a little bit. The photograph pretty much flattens it out, but working from life, this wouldn't be as flat. Don't believe everything you see in the photograph. A 
lighter over here. A little more of a highlight over here. More titanium white into the pink mixture. In theory, I should be using medium for that, but nah, we'll be fine. Now, I don't want to round out the cheeks too much. You know, her cheeks aren't really a perfect curve, which is kind of what the photograph makes it look like. So I have to be careful with the uh, tonality across the cheekbone. In particular here, I'm starting to get, it's starting to get too dark now. Now going in this kind of direction, you know, like the hundreds of brush strokes in this direction, uh, with a smaller brush just to have more control and to have a softer edge. This part takes a really delicate touch to get the edge to be just right. lighter over here. All right. So now the chin is going to have to have much more specificity to it now. So with the same brush, I'm just going to kind of dry clean it. Hopefully you can see that. And again, I hit the canvas, um, this time directly. I think it'll be fine, whatever. So just taking a little bit of paint without trying to add any medium to it. And now we're going to put in a very graceful kind of curve here. And again, no medium. Only use medium when necessary. And it's a little cooler. I'm going in this area, okay? The cooler, or sorry, there's a cooler. I'm all confused. So in this area here, okay? I'm trying to get a cooler tone. Paint handling is a thing, okay? You know, it's something you have to get used to. Just like with drawing, the way you handle the paint, knowing when to use medium, when to not use medium, even down to what colors to mix, is all down to your understanding of your tools. Trying to get a softer transition here. I think I can soften it even more. So another thing I noticed with a lot of the um, master studies I've been doing, in particular the Waterhouse, the Waterhouse ones, it's the, um, the beauty in the edges, the edge quality. It's really something to take note something that I want to improve on these days. It's my edge quality. And I've been kind of dreading it, but I have to put in a darker tone underneath 
but I don't really have another bristle brush. Hold on, I'm just gonna walk across the camera. Again, I'm showing you everything. All right, so we got another bristle brush. It's kind of too large for the job, but well, we gotta use what we got. I really do love these Robert Simmons brushes. Hopefully you can see that. really want to get that soft edge all right now we're going to switch back to this brush Trying to get that magical edge. Pretty soon I'm going to have to transition into the background brush. Alright, so the background brush hopefully still has the background color and it does which is pretty nice it's carving this edge making this edge actually softer and this one sharper Now that we are at a distance here, so the camera is a little less zoomed in, I was going to go into the hair right away, um, but I think that this value is just too dark. So I'm using, using actually less medium. Like I said, it's important to know when to use medium, when to not use it. And I'm not using it just because I want to basically go right over top of what I had before and kind of just push it uh, so I'm kind of like smudging the paint so to speak in general I think it's easier to make a softer transition like that um, with a brush that's actually loaded with paint as opposed to one that has a lot of medium. All right, so now we can get into the hair. So this is the brush. Yep, this is the one, the one that I used for the hair earlier. And that is all my pinky marks, whoops, on the side. Guess I got my pinky in the paint. Oh well. So I'm gonna use the alizarin permanent, the ivory black. See if we can go any darker, which we can. So before I probably would have went right into my medium, but now just a lizard and permanent ivory black. Forget about the medium, at least in this point, at this point, what I'm trying to do here. So we're just looking for areas to push the dark. And we're going to let the color that we put in before be. We're going to leave it be. So it's a little darker up there. And the reason I'm using a lizard and permanent is just because, I don't know why, but for some reason, when you make your darks warmer, it tends to look a little more aesthetically appealing. I don't know why. It's just something you have to try out on your own. Wish I had a better answer for that, but... 
It just looks better when the darks are warmer. Just trust me. At least for portrait. I don't know if it's the opposite with like plein air or something. I really don't know. We're just softening over here. So what I'm gonna do is get a clean and dry synthetic brush. Just kind of pull the hair outwards like that. Just to get some soft edges. Just letting the thickness of the paint help me out a little bit here. The hair actually goes out a little more. Over there. And now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's glaring a lot over here. Just gonna use this brush here to eliminate some glare. Now I really have to think about the vignette of this painting. Um, so remember the vignette just means uh, the areas that you leave unfinished. You want them to leave them unfinished so that it complements the, the rest of the areas that are more finished. So with the hair, just a few little dark tones here and there. Don't want to do too much for that, however. All right, so I got to think about the, the vignette. I think it looks a little strange just to have the blue there and then nothing here. So I'm going to mix, I'm going to recharge the background brush using just the same mixtures basically, the ivory black, the burnt umber, ultramarine blue. I'm gonna try not to use too much medium. And this is just going to frame uh, the, the study, the portrait. And the background I'm painting pretty much just as thick as the uh, the portrait just as thick as the face. I'm softening this edge back here. That's just to have a more matte color, meaning a more um, uh, one that'll glare less. I also think that the quality, the surface quality, of a painting that's uh, oil painting that's painted much more thickly. It's just a little more aesthetically appealing to me. I don't know if it's the same for you, but to each their own. If you like a thicker look or a thinner look, that's really up to you. So in terms of the vignette, I also have to think about these brush strokes. You know, these brush strokes that I'm applying in the background aren't just, you know, I'm not just putting them wherever. I'm thinking how it frames the entire abstract shape. Though it is a study, though it is a small portrait, I still consider it an artwork. So I do have to think about the way that it looks, even the background. All of these little brush strokes that you're seeing here, there's a lot of planning out in this, okay? So let's get the dark brush for the hair and just move this up a little bit and soften the edge while we're at it. Let's let that one be soft and let's just mess around. Let's make this one be sharper. Even the hair, okay, even the hair has, you know, specific edge quality to it. Just want to make sure there's enough room for the skull.
could go a little further back. So, uh, one question I'm frequently asked is, um, when do you know to leave it? Like, when do you know, uh, you know, when do you know that it's done? And the answer is, I have no idea. I mean, you just kind of feel it out. You know, for me, I'm just kind of, you know, it's just a matter of taste. You know, if I want to paint stuff in here, I could. Easily could. Not easily, but I could. But I don't know. I'm just feeling this out. I'm using the brush that I used for the uh, shadow tone here to put in some lights for the hair. So with dark hair in particular, I tend to use flesh tone to get the lights for the hair. It's just kind of a little trick that I use. I don't know, man. Should I put in the, put this in? Well, you probably already know because you saw the painting in the beginning. Ooh, I don't know. Sometimes it's not a good idea to throw something in after the fact. Hmm, should I put the light in here or not? I don't know. I'll just keep painting the hair and then that idea will come to my mind, I guess. Lighter shapes here. And all throughout here. Alright, so I've been thinking about it. For the for the drapery, I think I'm gonna actually paint it in. So um, yeah, one thing you'll learn about me is I love painting. <laughs> the more time I can spend painting, the, the better my life will be. So let's just do this. Let's do this. Alright, so I'm gonna get a different brush. Might as well be this one. This is a large brush, titanium white. I'm just mixing off camera here. Let's see if I can show you. Titanium white, a little bit of yellow ochre. Feeling kind of brave. Or maybe I just want to be here in the studio longer because I love painting. I really do. All right, so we're gonna start to kind of gesture in where this is gonna fit. I'm going to use a little bit of medium just because I want the paint to flow a little bit more and I want the uh, canvas, the tone of the canvas to do some of the work for me. So a little more medium. So that is, I'm going to let the tone of the canvas show through to, uh, you know, show in some of the shadow tones. So over here, you know, I hear people laughing around me, you know, I guess this is nothing to you. But sometimes, I don't know, I said this in my Q&A, but I do film in a very hostile environment, at least for a YouTuber. And someone especially that's trying to paint or you need to concentrate a lot. But you know, you, you right there, you listening to me, you are my therapy. <laughs> you help me get through this. They're just very unwelcoming people around me. It's not something I usually share. I don't think I ever really share it. But I care about you. I want you to know the truth. So this shape goes down here. And again, I want the tone to do some of the work. So put this over here. A bit of a more reddish tone, this edge. All 
like I said, even when I was filming the Q&A, the first one, I had people banging on my door. It's just not the best thing. One day I'll get my own filming studio, I hope. I don't know. All right, a little more light. Over here. So I guess this is heading towards her chest, but her chest would be lower. So it's kind of cropped above her chest, which actually kind of works out very nicely. A little bit more red. I don't know, man. Painting kind of just takes you away from a lot of problems in life. It really does. It certainly does for me. Hope it does for you. All right, so now I'm gonna switch brushes to the shadow one that I guess I was using up there. So it'll be a little more green. Sap green, burnt umber, yellow ochre. I relate this shape here. It's a little bit, just a little band of light. I'm gonna use the, whoops, just dropped a brush. I'm gonna use the uh, Neo McGill Medium. Let's suppose a little of this, a little of that. Put in this darker tone, this strap. There we go. So let's see. So I'm gonna. Actually, I'm actually running into some complications here for the cropping. I didn't want to crop it right at her shoulder. So let me see how this works. Oh yeah, I, I'm pushing this too far. So this is actually gonna have to come outwards. So let me get the flesh tone brush. So again, this is how we draw with paint. Right, so that goes out a little bit. It's a little better. Now the shadow tone. All throughout here. I do think that the arm should come out a little more. Oh well, when in doubt, blur it out. I'm gonna keep it really soft over here. And what am I saying? I know I'm gonna have my own studio at some point in the future. And you'll be there with me. Just you sitting there listening to me is what will take me places. And hopefully I can help you out too. A little more of a darker tone. So this is the dark light, and I'm using the shadow tone, just taking right from the color value web. You and me, we're gonna have our own studio together. There we go. So now, it's time to switch to the flesh tone brush. Kind of putting this soft transition here. And I think what I'll do is I'll thin out the paint just a little bit with the background color and just kind of put more of a vignette over here. And I think that shape needs a little work. Let's get the brush for the hair. Goes down a little more. I'm gonna have to repaint the strap, but that's okay. There are worse things in life.
So a little bit warmer up here. The scapula actually goes all the way up here and it should leave a little ridge up here. Just thinking of basic anatomy. Here's a little more of the flake white there. Barely any medium. You know, someone that's really good at this, or was really good at this, was Rembrandt. He really knew, you know, how to, you know, do this. You know, when to make paint thick, and then when it when to let it be kind of liquid, flowy. And that again, that just comes with experience and taste, really. For me, I want this area to be as thickly painted as possible. Just looks neat, I think. All right, so now I'm gonna get a little more medium. Gonna put these larger brushes away. A little more medium. The background color. I'm gonna just paint in a little more of a vignette. Because the way that this looks really matters to me. So let's figure out how I want this to look. Do I want some of the canvas to show here? Mm, yeah, I guess. Lightly, lightly. So in a way we're kind of framing the, the model with this, okay? Even this, like, I'm going to choose to soften this a little bit, but still leave that little light shape there. And up, all up here, I'm going to choose to just lightly kind of just sketch the paint, just so you can see the tone underneath. All up in here. And then, once I have that, see I still want some of the tone to show here and here, and it's just thicker over here. So now a little more medium, and we want the bottom here to be even thinner. One little thing about medium, when you use more medium, the paint will glare, and who cares if it glares over here, you know, so long as it doesn't glare so much over there. Still leaving these little shapes to show through, just very lightly. See how I kind of rapidly change my mind? At first I wanted just to leave a little strip of color, then I wanted to, you know, whatever. You know, this is the art process. Let some of those flowy brush strokes. So this is kind of a more liquidy application of paint, whereas this is a more thick, crusty kind of paint. Just built built up here, 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 and here. Whereas over here, it's thin, liquid like water. Now I'm gonna stand back and decide whether to leave it be or not. And see how it's even a little bit darker over here? I kind of like that, that's something that I like. But I do want this to kind of there, kind of overlap a little bit. Now I'm going to stand back and see if that's too much. Yeah, this is kind of like, kind of like seasoning food, really. It's all about taste. A little lighter there. I just want that to kind of move upwards towards there. And I think the shapes are pretty good. So now with a clean and dry synthetic brush, I'm going to selectively soften. So first thing I'm going to soften is up here, the forehead. Let this be sharper. Let's even get the other brush to kind of overlap. Just get it to look like some of the hairs are showing through. Very painterly, there. And we're gonna soften here. And 
And again, I painted it really, really thick, so that actually helps when it comes down to the softening. It's actually easier to soften with thick paint, but of course I already said that a lot. And with the clean and dry synthetic brush, even the background, okay? So this dark shape, I really do like it there, but I want to make it softer. So even the background. And I know that this is the area right here of the background that has less medium, so I'm able to soften it with much more facility as opposed to, say, down there. Now the next stage would have been the selective render. Okay, but this is kind of my selective render. Um, you know, picking and choosing areas to soften. I, I find that a painting can be kind of overcooked, especially in Ala Prima one. There I'm referring to cooking again. But it can be kind of overdone. You see what I just did there? Um, if you worked at it too much, so yeah, I just got a little paint into the nose, but that's okay. There. Just soften a little bit. And again, you really, <laughs> this is a super long video. You're seeing every step of this as much as I can show you. Even up here, I want this edge to be a little, I don't know, I just, I didn't like the little, hook looking shape that was there. And over here. I did say this would be a long video. Hope the painting turned out alright though. We'll see. And I, th I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is just move the camera as close to front and center as possible. You'll probably see the glare or not. I don't know. But here we have the camera as close to front and center as possible, trying to minimize the distortion. All right. There you have it. All right, that being said, that's going to be about all I'm going to do for today's episode. I really hope that it helps you out. And always, 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 always remember, in a world that can be so, so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like. If you would like to see more of my content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload every Wednesday morning and every Saturday morning. If you hated this video, feel free to dislike it. Everyone's opinion is equally valid on our YouTube platform. I do wish you the best in all of your artwork, and don't forget, as I mentioned before, I now have merchandise available on my website, all thanks to Lucy. Please feel free to comment down below and tell Lucy how happy you are with the website. I think it looks amazing. I think that the merchandise looks amazing. I can't wait to get my shirts. I'm going to have the shirt with my logo, a hat with my logo, and maybe in the future I'll buy the mug and all of that stuff from the merchandise store. I'm really excited for that. In any case, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. I wish you the best, and I'll see you again on Saturday.